In our recent video, we used a new web-based GUI concept called CM Squares to configure the CMX500. We set up an LTE anchor cell, we configured an NNR cell, and I welcome Christian back. And the goal that we had after that was to actually test the device. So why we don't do that? Yeah, so let's try that. So what is the target? Uh, I would say in terms of testing, we try first uh, transceiver tests, so RF parametric tests. Yeah. So that should be the first goal. And uh, what you can see is shown here. It's basically our two cells you have uh, mentioned. So we have an NR cell and the LTE cell. So what do we have to do? The cell is simulated or the cells are simulated now. I have to switch on the device and I go into the device and switch off the airplane mode and by, and by switching off the airplane mode um, we are doing uh, registration to our simulated network. Yeah, we see that in the DOT square right now showing the combined register. Okay. Exactly. So our um, user interface for testing is DOT centric. So that means uh, we are showing the status in which the DOT is currently. And you see now we have a combined um, registration, yeah, combined registration done on the LTE cell. And what we now do is we say configure an NSA mode. So if we do that, that means that we add actually the simulated NR cell to the connection. Exactly. So that means now we have an uplink maintained from the UE to the network on the LTE cell and on the NR cell. And we could measure the NR cell. And now the idea is to measure the NR uplink. Okay. Should be our target to do some RF parametric measurements on this uplink signal. For that, we go um, to our RF parametric measurement. So we go into a workspace. So I don't have that switched on yet. We can configure the measurements by clicking uh, the configuration parameters dialog here. And let's see um, what is configured here for, um, for the cell measurement. So we have a TDD mode, we have um, N78, we have the channel and the frequency where we want to measure. And we have the channel bandwidth, so in this case 100 megahertz. We have some um, yeah, expected um, power, uplink power, um, which should be um, the signal um, from the UE. Yeah, and then we can simply switch on the measurement by clicking that um, play button. So the measurement is running. And in our workspace here, we see at the moment three measurements. So you see power dynamics, you see phase error, and you see EVM versus subcarrier measurements. Okay, I want to take a look at ACLR. Okay, so if we have uh, interest in one very specific measurements, we can um, switch that off all and switch just the ACLR measurement on. And we have the detailed view of that ACLR measurement. Okay. If we want to have an overview, of course, we can just um, switch on all the uh, measurements and you have a nice overview over all the RF parametrics in the uplink from the UE. Okay. So I guess uh, in the last video, we talked that we can look at different aspects of testing, RF, end-to-end, -end, all that in parallel. So I guess we could end, add here an end-to-end -end test very easily, how that would be done. Exactly, so we have the connection going on, we have the RF measurements going on. And now let's add a ping measurement here. So for that we go into our services square. Um, in our services square we have the possibility to select um, basically into a workspace, into an analysis area, our um, ping measurement. So I can, for example, add another square area here to enable our ping measurement. So what do we need is actually only the IP address of the device. So that is um, the IP address from the device here. Um, we need to add that here to our measurement. So we will um, ping this IP address and we will generate a statistic out of this um, ping measurements here. So press start and then we get um, our measurement results here. So you see somewhere around the 14 to 15 milliseconds uh, round trip time is our ping result. So we could run that now for a couple of thousand um, intervals. Um, in this case, it's uh, 
yeah, a quite good ping result. So that's the first step in terms of end-to-end -end measurement. But what we're really interested in, of course, is throughput measurements, right? Yes. So I guess we could add that here as well. And we would need something like dynamic scheduling. Is that something that we can do with the CMX500? Yes, you can configure it in our CM squares environment. Okay. So, but I guess, Christian, we save that for one of the next videos in our video series, Demystifying 5G.